Hey guys, this week's tip comes with via request from a retailer I met a while back. He found this feature called number entry function while leafing through the help files. Basically what it allows us to do is customize data entry at the POS. And via that customization of data collection, we can use number or alpha codes and then tie those back to a more descriptive legend that can be better understood at a later time. Now his specific uses were if a customer was coming through the line and had a positive or maybe even a bad experience, he wanted the cashier to go ahead and place a note in the transaction file that could be searched on later so that management could either contact the customer or get in touch with them in some way to maybe either say thank you or make up for that bad situation. It could also be used for something like uh, maybe the cashier thinks there's theft going on during that transaction and they want to flag it so that somebody can look at it later. Or the third option could be maybe the customer just wants more information about your loyalty program, membership program, whatever it may be, but they ain't got the time right now. So the cashier can quickly flag in the transaction that the customer wants more detailed information. Then later on, the management team can search on that flag, find what the customer needs to know, and then get in touch with them via email or a phone call or whatever means is necessary. So let's take a look at this thing, and I think you'll find it pretty darn neat. So let's take a look at an example from the POS perspective first of what we mean by the number entry function. I'm on a basic POS screen here. I'm going to go ahead and assign a customer to it, Mary Peterson. And Mary today is going to buy this specific energy drink item. Now Mary has some questions about our loyalty program, could be a membership program, could be anything at all, but she doesn't have the time right now to listen to our spiel. But we've given in our store our cashiers the ability to flag this transaction so that somebody can follow up with Mary at a later date. All I did was put a button on my POS screen for customer comment. Now, if I hit that button, it's asking for an entry prompt here from the cashier. So in my case, Mary has a question about my membership program. So I'm going to say 411. That's the code I'm going to use for Mary Peterson wanting more information about something or other. When I hit enter, you'll notice that that number shows up nowhere on the POS. And if I go ahead and tender out here, even on the receipt, there is no entry of the 411 code. That code is just going to be kept in the electronic journal that can be searched on at a later date. And it clarifies that, hey, Mary wants to know some additional information about whatever the heck it is. So let's hop over to the journal side, and I'll show you exactly where that shows up. All right, so I hopped over to SMS Pro in the back office. I'm going to go ahead and look at my EJ transactions here, and I'm just going to look by date here real quick and look at all the transactions for today's date. Now, the last one here is the one that we just did with Mary Peterson. You can see here's Mary in the transaction. Here's the energy drink, and look right here. This reference code field here, the 411. That is exactly what the cashier put in via entry at the POS, and I can search on this specific field at a later date to tell me, hey, Mary must want to know something, 411 code, about something or other. Maybe it's our loyalty program, membership program, maybe it's just this specific product. Now, you can get as detailed as you want here. You can type in a full character in a full sentence. But a lot of you guys aren't going to have a QWERTY keyboard there. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and plan for codes similar to this that can be referenced back to a more descriptive legend at a later time. You could post this short list of codes at each register. You could have it in the back end so every management team member knows that 411 means Mary wants some information. Go ahead and look Mary up in the customer file. Give her a call. Shoot her an email. Do something or other to get back with Mary. So next, I'm going to show you how to set this function up in the system. And then we're going to take a look at the electronic journal again in a more realistic search methodology. So I'm in a basic SMS Pro setting here. All you really have to do, it's real easy, go up to your system menu, hit function. All the functions are going to come up here. Go ahead and hit the little magnifying glass so that we can look up. And then remember, this thing is called number entry. So if you type in the word number, you're going to get a couple options here for number entry. Now this first one here, function number 1810, that has something to do with the accounting bean counter. So skip that one. The one we want is function 760 right here. So if we highlight that, click OK, it's going to go ahead and bring that function up here in the function table so that we can begin to work on it. So to work on this client-based function, function number 760, just make sure you're, you're selected, your cursor is on that particular function. Come up here to the toolbar again and hit this little toggle detail view button right here. When you hit that, it's going to bring up the basics of the function here. Now what we can see is the function number 760, it's for the client or the customer side 
bit of SMS. It's an operational type of function that we're going to work in, and the function itself is called number entry. This stuff down here has to do with who can see it, who can view it, who can use it, that sort of thing. So let's leave all that as default. Then what we want to focus on is right down here, this alpha parameter. This is the field where all the magic is going to happen. So in this next part, you're just going to have to memorize it. You could look it up in help file too if, you, if that's what you want to do, but I'm just going to paste it in here. And this is just the command of what we're telling this function to do. What we're telling the function to do is entable the sale registration table, which is the electronic journal, populate field number F1079. Field number F0179 is just a SIL field that's associated with that, remember that, I think it was the registration code there that we saw in the electronic journal, that little header? That's all it's saying. So when this function is activated, populate this table, this field, with whatever the heck it is the cashier enters. That's easy. There's nothing to it other than that. Go ahead and apply that change, and you're ready to go from this perspective. Now, when you're in the POS, there's a couple different ways to access this function that we just worked on. I'll show you a button here in just a second. The first option is if your POS section has the uh, header right up here at the top, the main navigation header, under the operation menu, you will now have an entry that says number entry. So that if you were to go ahead and hit that toggle down menu, come down here to number entry, you're going to see it's going to give us that same entry request that you saw in the original demonstration at the beginning of this video. Now, the other option, too, is to go ahead and have a customer comment button and similar to what I had in that first demonstration. Now, most of the guys get upset when I show you this type of stuff. So if you're the type of retailer that knows how to set up a POS button, then go ahead, by all means, do it. I'm going to paste over here, just over to the left-hand side here, the URL that you're going to need to associate with this button. Because really, all this button is doing is calling a URL that calls a script that calls the function 760 that we just created. That's all it is. If you have any questions on this, go ahead and contact your certified reseller and he or she can set you up with this in just a few minutes. So the good news is we're done with setup of this thing. There's nothing to it other than those couple steps. What I'm going to do is go back into the EJ and show you a more realistic view of probably how you would go ahead and look up these types of transactions over a period of time. First, you're going to go ahead and select the journal option from the top header here. Then under the e-journal submenu here, go ahead and select dates. Then under the dates, go ahead and select the compound journal query tool. Now, there may be an easier way to go about this search, but this is the way I know how, and you guys are kind of stuck with my knowledge of the system, so this is what I'm going to show you here. This top half, pretty simple. Pick the period of time that you want to search. Come right down here to where the magic happens in our compound journal query. Instead of searching for a totalizer in this case, we're going to hit the drop-down button. We're going to come down here to key regular. I'm going to go ahead and select that for the search for. I'm going to come right here to the first criteria. I'm going to drop down. I want to search for our key that's a function. And I want that function to equal what, I wonder? Well, it's at 760. It's that one that we just set up a little bit ago. Now that we've got that set up, we're going to go ahead and add one more criteria to make sure that we get exactly what we want. Setting up that second criteria is real easy. All we have to do is come right here to where it says disable, hit that drop down and say and, and now we want to set up the second criteria over here. So we hit this drop down again and we say we want the entry, the entry of this function, 760, we want that to equal, right there, we want it to equal the what we did in the demo, 411. That's what we did originally, so go, let's go ahead and take a look at that. I've got my query set up here. If I hit launch, the results are going to show up over here. You can see I've got two entries here. This is the first one we did in the original demo where they ordered the energy drink, and we typed in that reference field, the 411. Here's also another one that we did today. I just did it so we had multiple entries. So here's the code that they ordered, the item that they ordered, and you can see the cashier typed in 411. We need to get a hold of Mr. Smith here and get in touch with him about whatever the heck it is he had a question on. So that's one way to do it. Let's hop back to the query tool, and I'll show you a couple other options as well. All right, so we're back at the query tool in the EJ, and we're just going to take a different look at this thing. Let's say we set our program up a lot like the retailer that asked me the question originally. He had three basic codes that he wanted to use. One was the customer had a bad experience. Two might be strange behavior going on in a transaction or maybe theft going on, something like that, in case you wanted to flag it. And the third one was his, the customer needs more information. What I originally demoed is 411. So let's say those three codes are one, two, and three. Makes it pretty simple. So to set up the query, pick your time frame, set the key to function number 760. We want the entry now to be less than or equal to, which is right here, this little doohickey, less than or equal to three. Now if I launch this, what's going to happen and the result that comes back is going to be all the transactions where the code in that registration field is three, two, one, or zero if we had that. 
just to confirm with you here, we'll go ahead and hit all here. You'll see here's the reference number three for this transaction. If I come to this transaction, here's the reference number one, and I think this is my number two. Yep, sure is. You can see it right there. Number two was the reference number that we used there. These other transactions are all going to be three or less, so it allows you to search over a period of time for a range of codes by using the less than or equal to sign. All right, so we're back at the compound journal query tool here, and I want to show you one other option here. So everything else is the same, everything that we just did. I'm going to go ahead and set the criteria back for the entry to be equal to, and now I'm going to type in an alpha, and I think the alpha I used earlier was upset. This customer is upset. I've got an alpha numeric keyboard attached from my POS. My cashier went ahead and typed that in because he or she knows that's the code that I want them to type in. When I launch this query, again, it's alpha numeric. You can see we get the one transaction, and you can see right here we have the ability to use alpha numeric characters in this reference field as well and they can all be searched through the electronic journal. All right we're back at the query tool again one last thing I promise you got all this set up you got the query exactly the way you want it no point in having to retrace these steps again just come right up here to the compound preset entry window here put your cursor in there and you could call this whatever the heck it is that you want this is my customer search if I could type here customer search comment field something like that hit enter that's gonna save this search under this comment so next time when you come in you can just simply hit the select button you'll be able to select it from the list hit OK and it's gonna bring it right back to the same query that we had set up just a second ago so just another way to quickly go back in make the search you want find it use it over and over and over again with both criteria met that's it for this week's tip hopefully we've given you a few different ideas for ways that you can use the number entry function within your own POS until next time have a great day.